Welcome back to In History. Today we're unraveling the fascinating rise of feudalism. How did this unique system shape medieval Europe? Stick with us as we journey back to the days when knights and lords ruled the land. Feudalism didn't just pop up overnight. Following the collapse of the Roman Empire, Europe was a place of turmoil and constant warfare. Local rulers struggled to defend their territories against frequent raids and invasions, particularly by the Vikings and Magyars. It was out of this chaos that feudalism began to take shape, offering a system that promised security and stability. At its core, feudalism was like a complex set of military and legal obligations among the warrior nobility. Kings and lords granted lands known as fiefs to vassals in return for military service and loyalty. This system was based on hierarchical principles, where everyone from the king to the lowliest knight had a determined place and role. Life under feudalism varied greatly depending on one's position in this hierarchy. Lords lived in castles and commanded local regions, knights trained for war and protected the land, while peasants or serfs worked the land, living lives of hard labor in exchange for protection and a place to call home. Despite its rigid structure, feudalism maintained order in a time when governmental structures were virtually non-existent. While feudalism had its roots in France, the system took hold across much of Europe, each region adapting it to fit local needs and conditions. In England, the Norman conquest in 1066 redefined feudalism through the implementation of the Domesday Book, which efficiently catalogued all lands and holdings for tax purposes. Meanwhile, in Germany, feudalism intertwined with the Holy Roman Empire, where local dukes and counts held significant power, while much focus is given to the knights and lords of feudal society, women played crucial yet often overlooked roles. Noble women managed estates, arranged diplomatic ties through marriage and sometimes even acted as regents. Peasant women toiled in the fields alongside men and took care of household duties and family needs. The church also offered a path for women seeking education and influence with some becoming nuns and abbesses wielding considerable power within religious communities. Take, for instance, Eleanor of Aquitaine, one of the most powerful and wealthiest women in Western Europe during the High Middle Ages. Her marriages placed her at the center of Europe's political alliances, and her patronage of the arts helped to spur the cultural blossoming of the period. Meanwhile, everyday life for most women was strenuous and demanding, yet their contributions were essential for the survival and stability of their communities. Understanding the dynamic roles women played helps to paint a fuller picture of feudal society, challenging modern perceptions of passive medieval womanhood. Now, as we continue, let's look at how feudalism adapted and thrived across different regions of Europe. Feudalism didn't last forever. By the 14th century, factors such as the Black Death, which decimated the peasant population, along with the rise of trade and the middle class, began to undermine the feudal system. The signing of the Magna Carta in 1215 had already started to challenge the absolute power of the monarchy and paved the way for modern legal systems. From a means of managing post-Roman chaos to a structured system connecting every layer of society, feudalism has left an indelible mark on European history. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more fascinating journeys through history. What historical topic should we explore next? Let us know in the comments below.